And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, Terra Mystica. People have been begging me to review this one, and I meant to get it done in 2013, but I hope the first week of 2014 is close enough. This game came out a while ago, and when I first saw the board, I said, oh, that's you know a very heavy Euro game. Wasn't sure I was interested in it, but there was a couple things that made me th rethink that. One was, there was asymmetrical powers, which means each player had a race of fantasy beings that had a special power that nobody else had. And I thought, oh, that sounds really interesting. And another thing is people kept telling me, this is the best game of the year. And of all the games of the year, I like to try to play the ones that people say are the best game of the year. So I certainly want to give this one a shot. So let's take a look briefly and we'll be back. There's a lot going on in this game with a lot of different pieces. I am not going to explain the whole game. It would probably take 20 minutes or so to explain every detail. Rather, I'm just going to look at some of the different features of the game. So the first feature here are the player boards that people have. Each player will get their player board and it has two different sides. So you can see this side is the alchemists. On the other side, we have the darklings. And so these player boards are very specific because there's a lot of differences between them. For example, here's a, an area where you have power and where you keep magical power. And so the numbers on those might be different. So for example, on the darklings, it's seven and five. And for the halflings here, it's nine and three. Each race has a special ability here. And they also have a variety of different numbers and things here. And they have another special ability that they'll be able to use when they build their biggest buildings. So here we have the engineers and the dwarves and the nomads and the and the fakers. Now everybody also has a terrain. So for example here, the swarmlings, their terrain is swamp. Okay, these guys like to live in the swamp. And so that's important because you're going to be putting out your starting buildings in the swamp, but as the game progresses, you're going to want to build them, you're going to want to change other terrains to swamp. So it's going to cost you a certain number of shovels to change something to swamp, and you'll count the number of shovels between years. So to change swamp to desert can be very difficult. It will take one, two, three, while changing swamp to forest, or I'm sorry, changing forest to swamp would only cost one. So. The way the game is going to start is when you pick your race. So here we you say, oh, do I want witches or do I want these guys? Ah, I guess I'll take the, the witches because I can pronounce them. And so there's a lot of space in the board and you're going to put these buildings on these different spaces. So let me quick set this up like this. Here's the different spaces where different buildings are going to be built. And you're going to build a couple of these buildings at the beginning of the game. And when you build buildings, you're going to take them and place them out in the board. And at the beginning of each turn, you're going to get resources based on uncovered things. This is actually a pretty cool uh, mechanism here. So the more of these buildings I built, the more workers I'm going to get. That's what cubes are at the beginning of each turn. As time goes by, I'm able to put one of these back and upgrade it to another level, which means I'll get fewer workers, but now I'm going to start getting power and money. And then this can be upgraded to this building or it can be upgraded to one of these. So as time goes by and you're building the different buildings, the more things you pull off, the more resources. And when you build this giant building here, you also get a special ability that is just for you. Here we have a power section of each player's board. And there's three different bowls, if you think of it this way. And you're going to be able to move these at times. So let's say I can move two of them. So I could move these two up here, or I could move two from there, or one and one, things like that. And you can use this power to do things, but only when you're moving from bowl three to one. So essentially, I got to get it up here, which does nothing for me, get it over here. And once it's over here, I can move it down here. Now, if power's up here, you can move uh, power to bowl three for free, you just have to discard one permanently, which gives you fewer. You're squandering your power according to the theme, although it's a little odd because the fewer power you have, the faster it is to move it and get things done. 
Elsewhere on a player's board, there's gonna, it's gonna show you what your starting resources are. It shows you how many workers you have to sacrifice to do a shovel, and this is something that you can improve as the game goes by. Also, that gives you victory points. Uh, you can build, when you're building on the board, you have to build adjacent to your other stuff unless you go on a lake and, or on the river, I'm sorry, and you can move down the river farther if you increase your, your stat in that direction. Another thing players will have a, uh, a chance to do over the course of the game is to send priests to this area and increase on these different cult tracks. They're sending priests to join cults, and whoever is the farthest on cults will get uh, points. And, or I mean, Wherever you are in these cults, you get points, and also you get to move power and do different things. So this is one of many ways to get victory points. There's going to be different points that are used in various things on the board. There's uh, one on each turn of the game. There's six main turns of the game. And on each turn, it will show you, and this is done randomly, like for example on turn four here, whenever you put out one of those buildings, you are going to get three victory points. So there's different things that you can do and also shows you um, different tracks. If you're on a certain height of a track, you get special abilities. So there's various ways to get victory points from increasing your tracks. Players also will be picking a bonus tile. There's a certain number of bonus tiles put depending on the number of players. You'll take one of these bonus tiles, which will give you maybe extra resources. This one here, for example, gives you six extra money on your turn. And the ones that aren't taken have extra money placed on them. So let's say this is for a five-player game. These are the three that aren't taken by the, or I'm sorry, four-player game. These are the ones not taken by players. So the three that aren't taken get a coin put on them. So next turn, if someone takes them, they get the money. So that's kind of, you know, uh, somewhat of a general idea of some of the concepts of the game. As the game progresses, you're going to be putting uh, places out where you are supposed to go at the beginning and you'll be slowly expanding those by changing spots next to you into your terrain type so that you can build other buildings out there and then hopefully upgrade those buildings as time goes by. And if you have a big enough section, uh, three or more, and you have buildings that are worth a certain number of value, you'll be able to establish a city, taking another thing that gives you special ability and or points. So there's different resources to get. There's workers and money and magic. There's bonus tiles up here that you can get uh, depending on where you are on the cult tracks. That I'm, I'm sorry, this lets you, I'm sorry, these are bonus tiles that can move you on the cult tracks. See, this one moves you three on the red cult track. This one only moves you one, but also will give you three gold. Um, so there's various things, players. There's actions down here at the bottom that players can take. And once someone takes that, you know, you can spend four of your magical power to do this. And then you put an X on it because no one else can do that action again. And so really, players are going to get income on their turn. They have eight different actions that they can take. There's a reference card for things. And that's going to be most of these actions are to build or upgrade things on the board and then place them out here. If you want to build nice big cities, but at the same time, you want to be near somebody else because if you are next to another player um, and they good things happen to them and they build, you will be able to get spend victory points to get power from being next to other people. So the game kind of has a forced cooperation. Again, that wasn't a full overview of the rules, but hopefully gives you a little idea of how the game plays. There's really a lot going on in Terra Mystica. Obviously, I mean, because I probably in the comments people say, well, you didn't talk about this. You're right. I didn't talk about everything. But the point of this review is not to teach you how to play the game. I'll let other reviewers do a better job than me of doing that. But I want to give some impressions of the game. It's really hard. I mean, I delayed doing this review for a long time because putting my thoughts in order, um, the, my first play uh, reaction I was, was very different than, than, than follow-up plays. And I, I was just worried that I, want, I didn't want to give it an off-the-cuff negative reaction. Um, be, but I, at the same time, and I also didn't want to say it was really positive either. I'll say this. I think that the fantasy theme is bumpkus. It really is. People are like, oh, Tom, you like you like fantasy themes. Well, I do like fantasy themes, but if you took the fantasy out of this and just named everything as in Americans and Russians and Canadians, it would have been feel it would have felt very similar. I never once felt anything fantasy. This is like a super complex settlers like a ton type game where I'm building stuff, but I'm building lots of stuff. Let's talk about some things I like. I like the idea of building buildings on the board, giving you resources. That's a cool idea. Um, it, I love how you just look at your board 
And instead of saying, okay, I have four of those, that gives me this and this and this, I like that. And I like the fact that each player's board is very different. It's not just that that players have a special power, it's that their numbers are different and starting abilities are different. I'm assuming everything is equal when all is said and done, but there's really no way for me to tell that without having played dozens and dozens of games that they seem equal, although some seem a lot easier to play than others. The game is really tight, and that's something I don't like about it. I wish it was a little bit looser. If you make a couple mistakes, you can go a couple turns without doing much of anything. You gotta be really cautious when upgrading buildings. The game kind of, this is another thing I don't like, I feel like the game kind of prods you in a certain direction. I would like this game more if it felt more free form, but when you look at the round, it says build these type of buildings to get points. Sure, you can ignore that, but you do so at peril of losing a decent amount of points. You want to build your big special building to get your special ability? Well, I don't feel like doing that. Well, you should do that because that special ability really helps you. So, I mean, granted, you have lots of different things to do, but the game kind of shepherds you. It doesn't tell you what to do, but it shepherds you in that direction. The thing I dislike the most about this game, I mean, I hate it, is that whole magical move one to one ball, move them to the air ball. It's like this whole delayed reaction, and then this taking uh, some out so that you can move extra ones, and I watched people game that, where they took a whole pile out, so they had six, they just zipped around. It just felt so gamey. It didn't feel thematic at all, and I, and I don't know what there is about it. I can't give you a strong thing, I just hated it. Hated it, hated it. Um, and this game is almost like Stefan Feld's games where it's basically point salad. I have no idea what the best strategy is because you get points for doing everything. Now in this game, if you play poorly, you'll get no points. So it's not a typical point salad game. You've got to work to get your points, but there's so many different ways to get points. That is a both a good and bad thing. Bad because I never know what I'm doing, but good because it means there's lots of varied ways to strategy. So, I've given you some good things and I've given you some things negative about the game. Where do I stand on it? And that's the thing. After all this time, I'm still not 100% sure. I like a lot of it. I like, it's a complex game. That's great. I don't mind it. I like doing this. I like thinking hard. I like gathering resources and using those resources to do other things. All that is excellent. And it just has good, but some of the things about it, that, that magic bowl, the fact that the... I feel sometimes like there's so many choices that are taken away from you by the time it gets to your turn that I feel like I have to do specific things. I don't like that as much either. And you know, when it comes down to it, even though it's a fantasy theme, the whole thing looks a little drab. You would think with all these pieces and all these colors and that it would just come across, but the cultish tracks are just so Euro-y. I mean, what's the point? Just move pieces on tracks. So I wish the theme was tied more into it. But all that being said, Still a pretty solid game. So, who do I recommend this to? Euro gamers, really. You like heavy Euro games, this is solid. There's, I can't find anything in here that you will not like. This is a great game, and the many people I know think it's exceptional, and many more people are going to think it's exceptional. I, I am going to say that. I think it's an exceptionally designed game. I don't think it's for me all the time, although I could play it. It is a little lengthy but I don't mind that it's deep, but there's no spark that draws me to it at the same time. So there you go. I guess this is leaning more negative than not. People who love the game are gonna hate this review. People uh, might be surprised that I like it. I, I'm kind of mixed up. It's not in my top 10 games of the year, but it certainly is a well-designed one. And if you like this style of game at all, probably this belongs in your collection, Terra Mystica. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door, Tom! Boop. Boop.